Mr. Sonnenberg here. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about are forces and weight. Uh, this is for Science 7 students and this is the unit uh, structures and forces. And for study reference you'll find this in topic 3 of your textbook. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, need to define and understand force. <clears throat> so force is the push or the pull on an object. So we will measure force in newtons right here. Okay, so we have to measure it in, or it has to be measurable, so we're going to measure in, in units. So right here we have a push. Okay, here we have a pull. This is an example of it. So force is the push and pull on an object. Now, when we measure, when we measure force, we measure force in newtons, okay, and it'll be symbolized by n right here. So one new newton of force, okay, it'll take us about one newton to take a thin rubber band and stretch it between our fingers. Uh, it also would take about one to take a, a D cell battery and, and, and just lift it up. So that's one newton of force. Now, how do we measure force? Well, we can measure force using this thing device right here that we actually call a force meter, or we can call it a spring sp scale. Okay, so it's used to measure the amount of force in, on an object. Okay or to measure the pull of gravity on a mass. So when we say a mass, we don't, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but we don't want to, we don't want to confuse mass with force or with weight um, because mass is talking about the number of particles in a particular object and the amount of matter in it. Where So now we're going to take a mass. So if I take this remote, for example, okay, this is a mass. I'm going to measure, I could attach it to a spring scale and I could measure the amount of force on the spring scale or the spring or force meter that is uh, exerted on this particular mass. So to describe force accurately you need to determine two things. You need to determine one, the direction, and two, the size. So where is the force being placed? Is it coming from top to bottom, or is there a force from below? Okay, where is the force being directed, and what is the size of the object or the mass? Okay, so Newton, uh, when we're talking about weight, weight, or when we talk about weight, we're going to start talking about uh, Sir Isaac Newton. So, weight is a force that we're going to also measure newtons because weight is a force okay and we always measure force in newtons so there's a story that uh, Sir Isaac Newton well he described force as the pull of objects together and he called that pull I don't know if you can see this it's a little light but he called it gravity now there's a story about Isaac Sir Isaac Newton that he was sitting underneath a, an apple tree and he started to think about why do apples fall downwards? Why don't apples float uh, or move, float into space or just hover in midair? Why do they fall down? So he used his mathematical skills and he actually started to determine that there's forces being pulled down uh, or forces between two objects. And he f called that, that uh, force, he called it gravity. So he said that the gravitational forces between two objects depend on a few things. One, or on two things. One, the masses of the object, and two, the distance between them. So I've got a picture here, um, right here. We show a stone up top, and then the earth. Now, the mass of this object, this stone, uh, is going to is going to be dependent or the gravitational force is going to be dependent on the mass of that stone and also the distance with these arrows okay so we have the mass and then here we would have distance okay 
So that is going to determine what our gravitational force is. Now that gravitational force, once we determine that, that is going to be called weight. Now this is where it gets confusing because weight, we typically, uh, we typically confuse weight with mass. But because gravitational force depends on the distance between two objects, an object's weight uh, changes depending where it is. So uh, the farther away from Earth, the less the weight. So for example, an airplane on the ground at the airport will have more weight than the airplane will have when it's up in the air at a high altitude flying to its destination because it's farther away from the earth and therefore the gravitational force is going to uh, there's going to be less gravitational force now this gravitational force though uh, as we're walking if I walk by you in the classroom there's actually gravitational force between us but we don't feel it on smaller objects but once we get into larger objects that's when you actually start to see the gravitational force and then the distance is increased as well then you'll see more gravitational or you'll understand the gravitational force more so I've just added a little um, equation down here just to show you that force is measured in newtons um, and it's equal to the kilogram or the mass in kilograms and the acceleration and acceleration is in meters per second squared so the gravitational constant okay, gravitational constant and this is more high school material it is 9 point, oops, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so that means basically just for purposes, of, uh, I'll round up, but that's meaning that with the Earth, if we had a um, one kilogram mass and there were 10 newtons being placed on it, that's basically where that number comes from. But it's gravitational constant, saying gravity's pulling down towards the Earth at an accelerated speed of it constant. It's always pulling down on Earth at 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, if um, Earth was smaller, say for example we're on the Moon, well, our weight actually on Earth is six times more than it would be on the Moon because the Moon has a smaller mass or uh, it, it has yeah, a smaller mass and therefore there's less gravitational force being placed on the moon so then we when we go into space we, sometimes these astronauts they, they say that they're weightless because there's less gravitational force and like I said the gravitational force is dependent upon the mass and the distance now, you just have to remember one thing, though. Mass is the amount of matter in an object, okay, or how much, or what the object is made of, and then the weight is the force at which gravity pulls on the object, okay? So, when, when we say, well, how much do you weigh? Well, really, what's your mass in kilograms? And that's what we should be measuring uh, if we were to weigh ourselves. But weight is discussing force within with which gravity pulls on the object which is different so I put a cartoon up here um, and it just talks about the difference between that and there's another cartoon down here it says weight is a force and is caused by the pull of gravity acting on the mass so if I have a mass structure the pull of gravity on that is going to determine the weight okay um, and the mass structure is the amount of particles or all the matter that is inside that particular mass. Okay, so this is uh, forces and weight, guys. I uh, hope this has helped. Uh, hopefully you've taken down some notes and you bring your questions to class. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next screencast.